Hi everybody, welcome to another video. This is it's something a bit different for me actually. It's something I did about a year ago now and uh, I've had the video there for quite a while but it's quite long, it's about 30 minutes long. So it's quite a bit of uh, edit, you know, after the editing and it's quite a bit of editing and narration to do. So I've left it really on the back burner but I thought it's time to get it out there because the results I think are quite interesting. I think you'll uh, you'll agree it's it's quite a reasonable finish that I get off of it. So we're using just two spray guns with this. Those that watch the channel will know that I've got quite a range of spray, spray guns. But we're using the SATA 4400B and you'll see, well I say you'll see, it's got a green cap on it which is the HVLP setup which is normally a base coat setup. And I've put that on it and I've kept it on it throughout the whole thing just to show you that you can use you know one setup for the whole thing uh you know rather than keep swapping because all the other videos that i've had up uh, have been in a 1.2 rp setup so you know it's, it's a little bit different i suppose so that people can see so it's a 1.2 hvlp and what we're doing is we're at the moment we're laying the base coat which is a gold base coat because this is going to be a candy candy with flames so we're, we're loading the base coat on and we just give it a few coats to give it a good finish and now we've, we've turned the pressure down slightly we're holding the gun away from the tank and the idea is we're going to make the metallic stand up a bit more and then that will catch the sunlight through the candy that's the idea of it. We're going to put some fine line tape on to do the flames, which obviously I'll take you through as, as and when we do it. But at the moment, it's just about getting that, that um, base coat on. So, as I say, we're using this gun. We're also using the LPH50, uh, and we're using that in a 0.4. And... When I first, I, I got these from Japan, the LPH 50s, and a lot of the stuff I do, uh, there's not like a load of use for them, but they're, I find them, uh, my, my, you know, the amount of time I've used an airbrush is quite limited, but I find them quite easy to use uh, compared to an airbrush, simply because I think it's because I'm, I'm used to using spray guns. So we're going to use the, the LPH 50 to put some of the, uh, the flame effects on there so we're using fine line tape and the idea with fine line tape i find anyway is you want to get the the, the most for, for doing stuff like this anyway you want to get the most manipulative manipulative tape you can get now the different colors i've done a fine line tape video so i'll put that in the description so that you can get a little bit more information on the fine line tape and you know how to use it but if you're doing stuff like this you want the, the the thinnest within reason you can get you can actually get 1.5 mil tape this is a one point uh, sorry a 1.3 a 3.0 so it's a three millimeter tape and they do this in uh three mil six mil nine mil 12 mil up to i think 25 mil or, or one inch so don't be tempted to go for the six mil or something like that if you're doing these fine curves because I'm not following anything here. I'm just doing it as I as I feel like, really. But if you're going to do lots and lots of these curves, the thinner the tape, the better. And give it, you see I'm stretching it, give it a little pull, but don't stretch it too much because you want that line. Obviously, with, with this, the, the, uh, the left-hand side as we look at it here, so towards the bottom of the tank, will be the part that's that's colored so you want that line to be consistent so if you pull it too hard it will stretch and it will get slightly thinner at that point and then when you've finished you'll notice that that line is uh not not right it just doesn't look right so i'm just looking at it to get it basically right it doesn't have to be exactly the same nobody's going to look at both both sides of the tank at the same time but you want it to be 
reasonably consistent with whatever you think. And this is obviously my interpretation of what I'm doing. You can do whatever you want. You can make the the um, the flames more um, more of an apex and less of a curve, whichever you want, really. But I'm I'm aiming here to get it to finish at about the same point. And as I say, this, this is this is purely I'm doing this purely for fun. So it, it I don't have to like mimic anything or or meet anyone's specifications. I'm just doing this just to play with really to just to um, to try it because it's not the sort of paint job I do really. I do uh, mainly stuff that sorry minimix the manufacturer's finish and obviously you know most manufacturers wouldn't finish like this so yeah just make sure that it's all all down properly and what you'll notice is where you've done a drop coat so the the metallic stands up slightly more than than would do otherwise uh, and i've done that on purpose and that that's because once you put the candy on top you get the little glistening effect which hopefully I can show you on the camera, a little glistening effect where the sun picks up the little bits of metallic because they're just sitting up more. But by doing that, you, it makes it makes the tank slightly coarser to the touch. So it, it also makes it slightly harder for the tape to sit flat on the tank, if that makes sense. So it makes it slightly more prone to leaking under the tank under the tape when you put your when you start to add as we'll see soon when you start to add your different color your different colors it starts to make it, it it can make it seep it's easier for it to seep if that makes sense now i don't get much problem at all when i do stuff like this i mean i rarely do stuff exactly the same as this but i use fine line tape a reasonable amount and i just don't seem to get any problems with it, with it bleeding as long as you do you, your your coats properly you keep your finger off the tape before you actually lay it on the tank you use a good quality tape this is um j tape which is an english make but i think it's available uh, throughout much of the much of the world, I presume. It, I think it's available in the Americas now. I think it's available in Australia, Australasia. I don't know if it's available in Asia yet, but I know they were looking to expand. And I've found it very, very good. And a lot of people reckon it's better than 3M, although some people will say no, 3M's better. It's it's a personal choice, but I I find it really good. Um, so I tend to use I tend to use that. I'm not sponsored or anything. I pay for it, so that's what I tend to use anyway. Um, so I tend to use that and I don't get much problem with any seepage, but if you're unsure, you can put like, well, you can do it a few different ways, but the, probably the easiest way is to put a base coat of, um, clear. So not, not clear as in, well, you can do it that way, actually clear coat as in, you know, the final clear coat, but a base coat binder. So a clear base coat. You can put that over before you actually start doing your colours. And then that, that stops or can stop or will stop normally. Stop any paint seeping under those lines. So it's a lot like a fail safe really. I haven't done that in this case because I don't feel that I need it. And well you'll see the end results at the at the finish. I, I didn't need it. But I'm as I say, I'm quite confident with using the fine line tape so i don't feel that i need to do that but you can do that and people could put a, a clear coat on uh to try and seal it as well but yeah th that's the best way of doing it but what i what i don't like about putting more coats on and i try and put as little as possible is so that it doesn't give you too much of a ridge from your various coatings if that makes sense and to me, a, a, like a coat of uh, clear base coat is just another coat. Uh, now you can do a flow coat, but you can also get away without doing a flow coat if you don't put too much paint on. So it's up to you really what you want. If you're inexperienced, then it might be a good, good idea to put yourself a, a coat of uh, clear base coat just over the lot to to seal it up before you start doing your colors and then if you 
uh, you know, you won't get that seepage that you can get underneath sometimes. It just it just seals it off. So all we're doing now is we're applying another uh, another metallic colour. I'm using the LPH50, and the LPH50 has been a really good little tool for things like this and, and things like when, when you're doing uh, small coach lines and things like that where you, you, you just want a good quality good quality pattern but it doesn't need to be big you want to I try and use guns on full fan because it just seems to atomize better when you start winding winding the, uh, the fan in it doesn't seem to quite atomize as well not in, in my in my opinion it doesn't so I like using the gun on full fan so I'd rather have like a, a 0.4 tip and use it on full fan and this believe it or not is full fan um, I'll put the gun settings on the uh, on the screen so you get a, an idea of, of what I'm doing but the, the fan this is only about about an inch about 25 millimeters so it's an E2 cap not an E4 cap I don't even know actually whether you can get the 0.4 with the E4 cap but you really don't need anything else and we've been, well I've been through on my videos before about the caps on these. The LPH80 comes with a uh, an E4 cap normally, although you can get it with an E2. And the LPH50 normally only comes with a, an E2 cap, but they're fully interchangeable. The tips, needles, the, everything's fully interchangeable. And again, I'll put a link to the video in the LPH50 stroke LPH80 video I did so that you can see the difference between the two but having something like this that gives you really fine atomization at really low pressure allows you to do something like this keep it on full fan and just add add as you want because I'm not trying as I said before I'm just trying to get a look here I'm not actually trying to to be uh, you know not, not trying to mimic anything else i'm just going for a look so i'm literally quite happy just adding material until i think it looks about right for what i want to do and that that's that's the whole crux of the thing really i'm not trying to 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 do anything i'm just going for a look really uh and and see what it's like like at the end but i'm using all metallic paints and then we'll go over with the um, to yellow, uh, a yellow uh, uh, candy coat basically, so that we can uh, we can still see underneath. And I'm using a, a powder candy coat, which we'll get to when we um, when we come to it. But I'm using a powder candy coat, which has proved to be actually really good. One of the problems with candies is that it. We're in direct sunlight, a lot of direct sunlight, even after you've obviously cleared it. In a lot of direct sunlight, you, you can lose some of the colour, and it would appear that even if you use something like House of Colour, really, you know, good quality stuff, it can still happen. Uh, and it's one of the drawbacks, I think, of, uh, of candy coats. It does tend to happen, and... You know, some people say, oh no, I've never had it, had it happen. And I think it depends where you are, how often the vehicle, be it a car or a bike, is out in direct sunlight, which makes the difference. But they certainly, uh, they certainly suffer more than, certainly more than normal base coats, which last, you know, many, many years without any problem. So, yeah, it, it's, just, it's just something to bear in mind. So what we've done now is we've swapped from these are all actually Honda colours, which I'll, I'll I'll dig out for you and put on the on the uh, description so that you can get an idea. But they're all Honda colours of varying degrees. So what we've done now is we've swapped to a it's, it's for want of a better word it's it's like a brown metallic, and we're just going to add what we think around these edges just to darken the edges where it meets the the gold because obviously when you take the the paper off or the paper and the fine line tape underneath what we're going to have is the original gold and then we're going to put some yellow over the over the whole lot 
just to just to liven it up really and we just put the gold on uh, sorry the yellow one until we we think we're, we're where we are and that's exactly what i'm going to do with the the brown i'm just putting it on and just seeing what i think really and you can't really make a mistake because no one's going to know that you put more brown on than you you wanted to you're just looking for a, a look uh, that that pleases you now these colors quite please me uh, and there'll be other people thinking what a revolting mess and I can understand that I'm, I'm fully I'm fully understanding of that I realize we're all different and we all like different things but I actually quite like these colors which is why I'm playing with it um, and obviously this is my ball game <laughs> so i'll i'll play with the colors i like but the idea will be exactly the same no matter what you're doing if you're doing it in greens uh blues reds whatever you want to do you can do a similar thing just by playing with different colors and different effects and you know see how it see how it turns out it's what it's just all about i guess uh if you're doing uh like side panels or something like that it's probably quite rare that you would have a bike with a fairy uh, doing something like this, but you know it could well be. But if you're doing side panels and the front front guard, front mud guard, then obviously do them all at the same time using exactly the same colours because it, it, it will all, it will all match then. But as I say, nobody's going to realise that you've you've overdone it slightly on a bit of brown or whatever. And hey, it may even may even look better. So we're relying, as I say. I'm relying on the tape here holding and you can see why it's important that, that that tape holds and doesn't bleed. So if you are unsure, as I say, do yourself a, uh, a coat of base coat binder. Uh, I, think, I don't know what it's called different things in different countries, but we call it base coat binder. It's just a clear base coat effectively. Put one of those over the top just to help seal it before you start doing this. Uh, and you should avoid any problems then coming through. But as I say, you do end up with a, another layer of paint, which might be a, a huge problem. So I think we're more or less there now. But as I say, we're just adding adding as we go along. The LPH50, just a quick one on the LPH50 while we're, while we're going through it. I think I started saying about it. But it's available in quite a few different guises. But... I found it a really lovely gun to use. It atomizes really fine, even with the E2 cap on, because someone said to me, yeah, that's right, I was going to say that one, I'm rabbiting on a bit, but someone said to me about the E4, oh, the E4 atomizes better than the E2. I don't think that, I don't find that at all. Uh, the E4 draws more material through the same tip, so if you think it by atomize better, because you're getting a bigger pattern, a bigger, wetter pattern, then yeah that that's that's atomizing better but i don't i don't think that i just think the way the paint is laid is, is what atomization is which you know it is what it is and when you when you use these things you use them at 0.9 bar really low pressure and they just they just perform effortlessly really really well and it's one of the things that i want to do i mean when you start i've got loads of different eye waters now and when you start, um, you know, getting into their various guns, they have such an arsenal of guns compared to someone like De Vilbis and people like that. I want to have an, an absolute arsenal of guns, loads and loads of different guns, you know, for their home markets and all different markets that you can pick up from Japan. You can pick them up. And, they, they you know, they, there's a real, real feast of, of different uh, guns there. So... Worth, worth checking out if you're doing stuff like this or thinking of doing stuff like this then uh, yeah check them out because it's a, it's a good gun and if you buy them from Japan they're not actually that, that overly expensive they take the same cut as the sorry cup as the Kiwami uh, the Kiwami 1 and the W101 the little side cup so they take the same cup as that so if you've already got one of those then you only need the gun and not the cup as well so we're taking the tape off as you can see not too much caution really as i say i'm reasonably confident that everything is all right i've done this sort of stuff quite a few times the weather's reasonably warm so we're not having to use heat which is a, a good thing really because 
heating the tape up and it will say that in the, vi the video that I've put in the description but heating the tape up also helps and by tape I mean the fine line tape not the uh, the paper masking tape but heating the fine line tape also helps make it more malleable if you're doing it in cold conditions it's actually quite uh, well, it's not quite difficult it's harder because the tape you know like anything plastic it just doesn't bend and move move so well so you, you need to heat the workshop up or heat the tank up so that as you're putting the tape on the heat transfers through to the tape and it just makes it easier to uh, move about so we're removing the masking tape and then we take the fine line tape now this is obviously the the uh the time where it where it all tells whether you've done it right or uh whether it's gone uh, gone wrong and as i say i was confident enough to do this without actually doing it uh with any any kind of protection and it, it bore out that it was absolutely fine there was absolutely no bleeding whatsoever even allowing as i say for the fact that the metallic sits slightly higher on these than you would do a normal car and, and you're just trying to get that to try and get the effect when the um when the uh top top coat of candy goes on or the top coats of candy should i say and you'll see the metallic through the candy then that's the idea of it so it's it's sealed really well and uh yeah done a really good job as i say this is j tape so you know make sure you use a good quality tape because if you don't this is the point where you'll be absolutely cursing yourself and always keep it at a good angle you see i'm keeping it at like 180 degrees from where you're where you're pulling it so that it uh it doesn't try and pick up also with the with the base the sub trait before you put your um gold coat on make sure it's a good solid base do it with something like 400 grit or 500 grit paper on a da and put yourself some um when you do it do it with as i say four to five hundred grit da and, and make sure it's it's relatively coarse and then just put yourself an extra one or two coats of base coat on yeah in this case gold base coat or whatever you're using put yourself a few extra coats of base coat to cover up any swirl marks or anything like that and what you're doing that gives it a better key because if if you do it with something like 600 you probably get away with but 800 or something like that you'll find that when you pull your tape off your fine line tape you can sometimes pull the base coat off with the uh, with the tape and it completely mucks the whole job up you know you've gone this is a lot of work involved in this and you know any cock up now is is a real retrograde step so you've done a lot of work so you want to make sure that when you start as i say you do it a re coarser than you would normally do it for a base coat because most of the time you'll put primer on you'll sand it or you'll put wet and wet primer whatever you're doing and then you'll put your base coat on and then you'll put your clear coat on job done finishes a good one you know everything everything's fine but when you're doing this with fine line tape then you need that substrate, you need that base coat to be on really, really well. So do yourself a favour and go with four or five hundred on a DA, a little bit coarser than maybe you would normally do. And that just makes sure that that base coat sticks really well to the, um, sorry, base, yeah, sticks really well to the tank. Doesn't stick to the, uh, the tape when you pull it up. And then you'll get no problem at all. So you'll see I'm using a, uh, a candy cover it's a it's a it's a yellow and it's made with concentrate powder now you mix the powder up uh, I mean this is one sachet of powder to a, <coughs> a litre of base coat binder the same thing as we were talking about for uh, you know sealing off the tape if you wanted to so I used uh, I used that and I've been really really quite pleased with it the only thing I would say is you need to, to filter at 125 microns, not 190, because I've filtered it at 190, and you get little small speckles come through, which is, I suppose, sorry, just take a I suppose 
it's little bits of um, little bits of powder that haven't quite mixed right. So do yourself a favour and get 125 uh, micron strainer. And since I've done that, I keep two lots of strainers, one 190, one 125. And since I've done the 190, I don't get any problems with uh, any bits in this uh, tool, in the candy stuff I do. So yeah, a good tip there, do that, and it just shows you getting little bits. Most people would notice that you care, but you will, and it will really annoy you. Uh, and as I say, if you, if you get into this stage, which is quite far down the road, you really don't want any cock-ups at this stage, so you've got to be confident in uh, what you're doing, basically. So this part here, you can put as many coats as you want on, really, to get the desired effect you want. Uh, as I say, it's, it's down to personal choice. This is something that I'm doing, so I add the amount that I think right. Somebody else might put a bit more yellow on or a bit ye less yellow on. It's entirely up to you. All you're doing at this stage with candy is to try and get an even coating so that it looks the same. So just bear in mind where you've been. The idea, the idea is if it's something like a, a, a car door or something, you can overlap 70% and get a nice even coating. With a bike tank, it's a bit different because the thing isn't, isn't flat. Um, so I, I, I found... You know, I'm relatively new to, new to candy. I only started doing it about a year and a half ago, I suppose, playing around with it. But I've found that you can just uh, do it very, very well just by keeping an idea of where you've been and just keeping everything even, just keeping the coats even, adding whatever you want. And it seems to work absolutely fine. So we're doing the clear coat now in the final stages. As I say, the, the clear coat with this came out pretty good but the RP version is better. It just seems to atomize slightly better. Uh, I did wind the pressure up, which the, the HBLP version of this gun, normally you're supposed to use about, about 1.6 bar, 1.7 bar, and that seems to be absolutely fine for base coat. But I wound it up to a two bar for the uh, clear coat, which uh, seemed to work absolutely fine. But as I say, the, the, the RP does give a slightly better finish, but it's a really good finish anyway. And if, you, if you've if you got this far and you want to flow coat it, so you leave it for a day or two, give it a sand, you know, just so that everything's flat, then you can put one flow coat over it. But it didn't it didn't need it. The, because what we've put on to make the flame effect, the amount of base coat we used wasn't a great deal. It just didn't need it because it wasn't sitting that, that high anyway. Uh, and that's, a, that's a, a good reason not to use too much uh, base coat. You need enough for it, obviously, for it to resist the weather, etc. But it's a, it's a balance of what you want, really. But it came out really well. And as I say, it's just, just an experiment for me, really. Just something different. And I wanted to do it. And it's been, as I say, as I say about a year, year ago I did it. But I thought I'd um, I thought I'd get round to narrating it and uh, get it up for you guys so you can see it and uh, see what you think. There's a pitch, uh, so picture. There's a, a video part of it at the end where it's out in the sunshine, and I think it looks looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, that, that's it really. I really enjoyed I really enjoyed doing it. It's something different. The colours, once again, as I say, is purely subjective whether you like them or not. I quite like them in the sunlight, they look quite good. And I quite like this sort of like yellowy, browny, orangey colour anyway. But yeah, there she is, guys, and I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it. You see the little speckles glistening, and that's where they obviously come through the candy. Look. Look, well, although I say it myself, I think it's, uh, it's quite a good job and something a bit different for you guys to look at. And uh, if you've managed to go all the way through to the end, then hats off to you because it's quite a long video and I need, uh, I need a cup of tea now because <laughs> I've got a dry throat. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you.